Is that all good? Can you see? That's yeah. Good. Yep. Good. Good. Okay. So it's interesting because this um my presentation I'm going to be talking about the MA Architectural Visualization Program that we we created in 2010, and um and it it, it builds on what we were just discussing there about um a, a, about what happens when you get to the end of an architecture degree um, and, and what options you have and um and simon's right the options you have these days are very different to what they were um a good number of years ago so you know similarly to emma um i i, I studied architecture in london and um I, I think i realized in my second year actually that i really enjoyed doing the computer graphics side of things and the the image creation rather than getting too too involved in the actual architectural design side of things and uh, so that's the way my degree steered um was steered really and, and just about got through the architecture degree as a result of that i think you know pretty pictures but awful designs behind them and um and so that's what i concentrated on after leaving after leaving university so i've worked well, pretty much after a couple of years i went straight into education just doing uh, technical support um, helping people, helping students to do their working in, uh, I think it was 3DS, 3DS4, V4 in DOS at that point. And, um, and yes, yeah, pretty, pr pretty uh, clunky work working with that. And uh, we're working with AutoCAD 12, I think it was released 12 at the time. And, uh, and, and then progressively, obviously, the tools have, have, have progressed since then. Um, but what I've been conscious of all the, uh, since I've been in, in education is, is that having that opportunity and that avenue, when you get to the end of a, a degree, any degree, but particularly an architectural degree, is that having options and knowing what those options are and what, what you can go into. And I think particularly, I think I certainly felt at 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, you feel that you, you know, you've just spent three years studying something. You think, what a waste of time that will be if I don't go and continue with that with that career and what you don't really I don't I think at that age what you don't realize is that actually three years is just but a small part of your of your your eventual life well hopefully of your eventual life and um and and you know moving into careers or moving into other disciplines is is you know the right thing to do if, if you're not happy in what you're doing so in 2000 so we started the school of architecture at kent in 2005 so it's a really young school of architecture but in, after about five years we started to look at our postgraduate provision and i have to i have to, i think i should be up front i should declare that the person who taught emma 3d studio max right at the beginning apart from spline curves was me and uh, and she was a university of kent alumnus so um um one of the things that we pride ourselves on is allow the students to go off into whichever direction they want to go into and so i think there's a i'm not sure if this is accurate or not but there's a statistic i heard the other day that eight percent of those students who start, start an architecture degree become a qualified architect. So that's a lot of students who then go on, may work in architecture, they may be a part two architecture student or, or, or a, a, um, off, a architectural assistant and things like that, but it's, you know, it's quite a small number that actually go on to become qualified, fully qualified part three architects. So but there's also a lot of other students that go off into other things. And so I wanted to create um, a, a, a postgraduate a master's program that would allow students to then really focus on what they want to do and that was the visualization of the spaces that they were imagining up to that point and visualizing the and really sort of like being able to portray those those you know really well so i've got some i've got some boring slides here and um, this gives you a flavor of of what the course is like so it's quite a varied course it's it's not um it one of the things we've been careful to to maintain is it is a postgraduate academic course. It's not just a purely um, 3D Studio Max training course and nuts and bolts skills course. There are there's an academic element to it as well. So the first, one of the first modules that you you undertake on the course is what is one about film and architecture, and that's a that's um a, it's a, a module which is all about um, studying how architecture is portrayed in in various genres of film, whether sci-fi or horror film noir and so on, but you're also understanding the, the context of the work that you're creating or will be creating, the context that that's placed within within the, the film industry. Um, we also work on another module called um, Digital Architecture, which is that it, that is the nuts and bolts module. That's the where we're creating portfolios of static images using 3DS, um, using um, V-Ray, uh, Corona, 
um, and various other plugins um, like uh, Forest Pack and Sinai, of course, um, and, and and so on. So, so we've got um, we, we, that, that's really kind of like the skills module, if you like, and you can see it runs throughout th throughout the sort of the autumn and the spring terms. Um, we've also got another module which also runs throughout the year called Virtual Cities, and that's where we work with um, uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. So. In the autumn term, we're looking at uh, augmented reality. So we look at how we can aug actually augment um, buildings through projection mapping. Um, so uh, students are involved with, with live uh, light festivals where they project their work onto, onto buildings, twisting them, turning them, turning them into things that uh, you know, aren't there ordinarily. Um, and then on the spring, in the spring term, we flip that round to, to look at virtual reality, working with Unreal Engine um, and um, Oculus, um, working with creating virtual environments. And a lot of the time we're, we're directing that towards um, um, projects of the past. So one of the things we're, we're quite keen to, of course, to do is to, um, is to highlight to students that the skills they're learning about, uh, the skills they're learning to, to produce uh, architecture which doesn't yet exist, it's, those skills can also be used for visualizing architecture that used to exist. Um, so looking at her digital heritage projects and, uh, and, and, and those sort of things. And in fact, one of the projects we worked on uh, quite recently was working with English Heritage on a project called St. Augustine's Abbey in Canterbury. Emma will know that place. And, um, and we recreated a virtual, virtual experience that visitors can go to the museum, put the headset on, understand the scale and the magnificence of what this uh, this now ruined abbey is like um, before they go and have a look at the foundations on the site. Um, more recently we introduced the module the architectural photography and I'll talk a little bit more about that later because when we're talking about um, uh, sort of in, what employers like to see in portfolios but this has become a fundamental module in the in the course and this is a this is a real um, a, away from the computer back in the darkroom uh, kind of module. So we're learning how to use, how to process films, we're learning how to, to work with cameras, working with um, depth of field, working with viewing angles, working with composition, um, processing film, processing some paper, but also working with Photoshop and Lightroom and, and digital cameras as well. But it's also working, it's, it's really le learning the fundamental principles about exposure, light control, uh, depth of field, lens length, all of the sort of fundamental control points of the camera, of the physical camera, and uh, which can then then be applied to their digital scenes and and their work in 3DS later on. In the spring term, we've then got some moving image uh, modules, which we get into high definition compositing, which is where the students take their 3D 3D Studio Max scenes and put them into film or put film into their 3D Studio Max scenes uh, using Nuke. And then there's another module which is where they, they learn the principles about film and video production, learning all about codecs and uh, editing and, and, and so on. But the key point is really this, the, the module in the summer, the one which they're currently, well, they just started, what day is it, Wednesday? So yeah, they started it yesterday, in fact, Tuesday. And, um, and this is a project where they have three different options that they can undertake. So the first of these options is to take a, undertake a 15,000 word dissertation. So I did say this course is academic. I have to admit, though, I've had in the, in the history of the course, I've had two students that have chosen that option. But the option is there, and it's, um, and it's an opportunity for those students who are perhaps thinking about continuing their academia, um, perhaps want to get back into teaching or get into teaching rather, or they perhaps want to go into a PhD or something like that. Then this provides a really useful um, vehicle to pr producing a, um, a PhD proposal, that sort of thing. In addition to that, we have a, a shorter dissertation option which they can do, um, but alongside that, the students have to produce an associated artifact, a, a body of work such as a film or folio of work and, and so on. And then option C, which is the option which most students undertake, is, um, is, is more, effort, more emphasis placed on the body of work and less on the writing and uh, the written component. So producers produce, sorry, students produce um, a much larger body of work much larger portfolio, it might be a marketing package, or it might be a short film, or a projection mapping piece, or, or an exhibition of photographic work. Um, and that, that project is, is, um, is developed in consultation with me, where we, where we look at the skills of the student, what they want to perhaps, which career they want to pursue afterwards. One of the options, I'll just go through, I'll flick through these and put some examples here of some of the projects that we've done in, um, uh, with the option B. 
And option C, one of the options to do in option C is to do another thing for work placement. And this has been really quite popular on the course. Um, so students, we have um, a visualization company which come into, usually come into Kent, obviously this last, last, last couple of years has been um, virtual. Um, but we have companies interacting with our students. First of all, pitching to the students what the company is about, um, the size of the office, the kind of projects they're working on, um, the, the, the type of student that they're looking for, what kind of character they need to be. Um, and and then, then they get the opportunity to interview the students. So each of the students has the opportunity to present to them the, the work they're producing all of the other modules, present their portfolios, talk to the, the uh, employers, and then the employers can then choose whether they would like to take any of those students on for a work placement. So here are some of the companies that we've been working with this year uh, and in the past. Um, initially, we first started off with Cityscape. Actually, our first two students in our first year, back in 2000, well, it would have been 2011 that went. Um, they both went to go into the work placement at Cityscape. And, um, and since then, we've, we've had a close relationship with uh, Miller Hare and BPR London. Um, and then more recently with Square uh, Glass Canvas, and then more recently with um, Pace Davison and Boundary, Patrick Jose and BMI. And, and this year we had 17 students, um, which is the most students we've ever had on the course. Most, most years we have around about 10 or 12 students on a master's course, and that's about you know, a good number, a good group number to work with. Um, this year we had 17 for various reasons, um, good applications and um, you know, I think there's a, a tendency to want to stay in education whilst the world is just a world of uncertainty. Um, and, and so we've had students from all different backgrounds this year, coming from serious programs, coming from architecture programs, coming from industry, coming from uh, computing uh, degrees, wanting to specialise, so a very mix of students this year. And a good number of those 17 students have now gone on starting, or will be starting in the next week or so, their work placements. Now, those work placements, as you can see, run all the way through to the end of August. And those students who have chosen not to do work placements um, and are doing dissertations or projects, films instead, will be working back at the university or in their, in their accommodation, working on their major projects and, and honing their skills. So during that process, I um, liaise with the companies, I liaise with the students, so I regularly keep in touch with the students and see how their work placements are going, keep in touch with employers to see how the students are doing, and then about halfway through the summer, I will then visit the company and have an interim review of about how the work is progressing, how they're fitting into the studio, how they're adapting to, to the working environment. And then come the end of August, uh, the work is submitted, the portfolio of work is submitted, um, and the following week, then the, that work is reviewed in situ. So it's in actually in the offices that I, I visit the student and, and they get an opportunity to, to, uh, to pitch themselves and I get an opportunity to get insight from the company as to how well the student has done. So if anyone's interested in, or in particular, if there are students who are interested in the course, the best thing to do is go to the website, which is kent.ac.uk and, um, and just go to um, the, the look for the School of Architecture or just do a search on the courses for architectural visualization. I believe, I still, but so certainly when we created it, it was the only master's program in architectural visualization. And I believe it still is the only master's program in architectural visualization. So whilst there's a number of visualization programs out there, which are short, short term credit, short, short term study, uh, six month study or six week study programs, or there are other um, undergraduate programs, BA programs and things like that, which um, uh, you know, much more general, generalistic, uh, visualization programs, BFX programs, that sort of thing. I, as, I, as, as I said, I believe this is the only master's program to specialize in architectural visualization, um, not just in this country, but in the world. And um, so um, if that's not the case, please do, please do let me know and uh, I'll reappraise that. Um, but the best thing to do is if you are interested as a student to go and study this is to have a look at the website, go to the architectural visualization MA, or equally if you are an employer and, and you know, interested in, in Perhaps interacting with with the students and taking on some of our students for placements then you know by all means just use the website and use my contact details to be in touch and uh, that's it
hope that gives an insight to the program.